Greetings fellow captains and welcome back to another community replay with the Hive Hand and today we are looking at a replay from Emrod 1989 as he takes out the Arizona. Now this isn't going to be one of those big huge massive 150,000 damage games uh, but Emrod is most definitely going to make the most of that of everything that's available to him and uh, and show off the uh, that part of it is showing off the precision of the Arizona and the second part is is basically highlighting some things that some players do do wrong so this is both great to watch and also educational so uh, we're gonna we're gonna get into the action so when was having a having a look around having a bit of a, a nose at his teammates and uh, trying to establish what's going on obviously they're pushing forward which is uh, good and uh, the uh, Konigsberg has also popped out his plane so Emrod knows he's been spotted he's making a bit of a turn he's expecting obviously a, a destroyer or a cruiser to be the one picking him up uh, more than likely a cruiser but there's the dis well, a destroyer and there's the destroyer smoke screen and also the plane and here comes uh, the Omaha and a player one now notice how the Omaha instantly turns to start firing off his guns gives up his broadside and get fucked uh, out of there absolutely instantly and one awesome shot by Emrod two what an idiot <laughs> uh, who goes broadside particularly at the start of a game and particularly in a ship like the Omaha I absolutely love the Omaha at uh, a tier, a tier 4 or more specifically the Marblehead the premium version because it makes a little bit extra credit and here we go here is victim number 2 a Nuremberg sailing out broadside 8 kilometers away from an Arizona what do you think is going to happen? That is two kills from two salvos. And what's that? Is that six citadels up in the top corner there? What is wrong with these people? So obviously, in Emerald's shoes, you're probably not going to want to go and get yourself tangled up with Podvoisky. So he is uh, turning and he's accelerating away and he's going to go and try and support the other end because a lot of ships have gone to the other side and well we've got a little bit of an intermission here between the action uh, so um, I want to talk about something that's kind of annoyed me a little bit lately and that is people complaining about people spending money on this game now I have the uh, the outlook of it's your money do what the hell you want with it if you want to buy premium ships and support the game buy premium ships and support the game if you want to play the game for free completely fine play the game for free but don't complain at the people who are supporting the game as the new mexico and was it new mexico and the t26 or t61 both take themselves out Obviously, as you can see, Emrod's team's got a massive advantage here. They've completely won the left-hand side. But, yeah, so that, that was busy. It, it's just a minor point. You know, if you want to play the game for free, play the game for free. But don't go giving a boost to the people who do pay, because it's the people that pay that keep the game running. Like, yes, would I like to see Wargaming charge less? Of course I would. Uh, for premium ships, make it cheaper for me. But, uh... Salvo number three, kill number three. <laughs> Again, broadside. All right, okay, he was behind an island. I think he might have been jammed up against it. But broadside to a battleship, you're going to get ended. So, yeah, that was just the point. It's like, you know, there's, there's no need to... Because you see it on, on the forums, I noticed a comment about it, some guy calling me a fool. I'm like, fair enough, it's okay, you can have your opinion and voice your opinion all you like about not liking premium ships or not liking how much Wargame charge. 
but there's no need to get into personal insults. Oh, I, I know me and Dan and, well, whoever I'm streaming with, uh, wind each other up. Well, that's banter. That's completely different. They're there. You can understand the context. And it may have been, you know, a bantery style comment, but it's never going to come across that way because... I'm never going to know the context of it. And, uh, ooh, Emrod has a Fabuki sneaking in on him here. And so he slows down, pulls a sharp turn, and uh, as predicted, the Fabuki was going to launch torpedoes, and he has, and they have missed. But the Fabuki does have more torpedoes to give. So uh, Emrod carefully uh, smashes his ship up against the rocks to stop himself from going any further forward. And uh, we're trying to establish what's uh, what the Fubuki's going to do here. And uh, get fucked. There we go. Salvo number four. Kill number four. <laughs> and uh, obviously the, the Fubuki's torpedoes were never going to get around that island because of the same shallow water that caught Emrod up and got him stuck. The same uh, was the same shallow water that ate the torpedoes. So obviously we're looking at uh, the Bajoni here who is reversing out. Uh, and as Emrod fires, obviously the Johnny, it would, that would be the time that it slows down and stops. So unfortunately, that is Salvo number five with zero damage. Uh, considering every single Salvo up into this point has murdered someone, uh, it's a, a bit of a shame to, and it, but it wasn't a full Salvo, it was only two guns, so we call it, we call that Salvo 4.5. <laughs> as uh, Emrod moves into uh, into position and he's looking obviously he's not going to be able to shoot the New Mexico from there the New Mexico is behind an island uh, two of his teammates that were over on the left hand side of the map with him have uh, have pushed round and started capping the Bajonis making his way north uh, for some unknown reason uh, there's there's nothing up there for him to fight and uh, as you can see, uh, Emrod is trying to line up a shot. And I think they're going to go straight into the map. Well, they didn't all go straight in the map. I mean, a couple of sneak, snuck through. So we'll call that salvo number five. Because uh, yeah, that was a, that was, that was a, that was on a bit of a whim. Whether he was going to get those shots over the mountain or not. And, uh, and he lost most of them. I'm assuming our uh, cruiser... He's uh, in smoke because he keeps on uh, getting detected and not detected. Right, okay, so uh, salvo number six. Oh, I obviously not as impressive. This New York has lost most of its health, but boom, there we go. Salvo number six. Uh, kill number five and Kraken unleashed. So it just kind of shows the precision of the American battleships. And again, people sailing broadside to a battleship now the uh, the Bajoni's taking a bit of a fancy to uh, Emrod's rear end and uh, there he goes and sets him on fire, the ship is on fire. and uh, he's having a look around obviously uh, the time has gone unfortunately didn't get time to get that next salvo off and uh, potentially pick up his six kill of the game, but uh, like I said, not a massive damage game, but an excellent all-round game. Uh, he showed off the the precision of the guns on the battleships. He got himself a kraken, uh, came top of the team by a significant amount, and uh, and also got himself a good amount of credit. So thank you very much for sticking with us, guys. I hope you enjoyed the uh, the seal <laughs> the, the the puppy kicking that Emrod did. And, uh, well, until next time, take care.